provide the fire I'll provide the sacrifice Yes You provide the fire And I'll provide the sacrifice You provide the spirit Spirit, and I will open up inside. Oh, you provide the fire, you provide the fire, Lord. Provide the sacrifice, yes. You provide the spirit. Open up inside, feel me, oh God. Feel me, up oh God. Feel me, up oh God. Feel me, up. Oh. You better fill me up, oh God, tonight. Oh, fill me up, my God, my God. Fill me up tonight. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Said you provide the fire. Yeah. And I'll provide the sun. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. You provide the spirit. Yeah. Tonight, and I will open up inside. Open up inside. You provide the fire. Star up in the inside of me. Let it burn. Provide the sacrifice. My body, my soul, and my spirit. Oh, you provide the spirit. Yes. You provide the spirit. And I will open up inside. Feel me, oh God. Feel me, oh God. Feel me, oh God. Yes. Feel me, oh. Feel me, oh God, tonight. Fill me up tonight. Fill me up tonight. Fill me up tonight. Oh, <laughs> Cabrando lo compra sala gadava. 
We surrender our lives tonight. We surrender our lives tonight. We lay at the altar. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Fill me up till I overflow tonight. Yeah. That is my prayer. That is my prayer tonight. Oh, till I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Welcome, 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 welcome tonight. Each and every one of you tonight, welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to see you, Andy. God bless each and every one of you tonight. Thank you, Father. You deserve the glory and the honor, yeah. Lord, we lift our hands and worship. We exalt your holy name. For you deserve the glory. And the honor, and the honor, yes. Lord, we lift our hands and worship. We exalt your holy name. For you are great. You the miracles so great There is nobody like you No one like you, Lord Yeah There is no one else like you You are great, yes You the miracles so great Nobody else, nobody else like you My God Welcome everybody there is no one else like you. Hallelujah. You deserve the glory. Would you worship him tonight? Worship him tonight. Come on, family. Come on, Zion. Come on. Get in, get in, get in. Come in. Share it on your page. Attract as many people as possible to Mount Zion tonight. There is a word and there is a place of priesthood that we want to exercise tonight. Kati Barasko Badang Kabang Farina Vahanasis Zilibrindo Loko Frahana Kadalia. We glorify your name. We exalt your holy name. For you are great. You the miracles so great. <coughs> There is no one else like you. Yeah. Oh, there is no one else like you. You are great. You're the mighty miracles so great. There is no one else. No one else. Yeah. There is no Like you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Welcome, 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 welcome tonight. Subscribe Thank in you, the Father. mobile app for multi track you, worship music for God. your ministry. Today. Welcome, welcome tonight, welcome tonight, welcome tonight. Welcome tonight, welcome tonight. Go to see you, Robert. Go to see you, Rosaline. Go to see you, Rama, First Lady. God bless you. Love you, baby. Go, go Mealy. God bless you. Andy, God bless you. My, my apostle Chris, God bless you. Go to see you. You, you, got, you. you got you got an awful something. You are here tonight. Blessed be the name of the Lord. No other God. Free 
And I will love your name, Jesus. You're the beautiful one. We love your name. Come, could we worship tonight? How we love your name, Jesus. You're the beautiful one. We love your name. Yeah. No other God, no other God, no other God, yes. It's going to do you good tonight. God bless you, Chris. No other God can be called a father. No other God, no other God called a friend. No other God can be called Redeemer. No other God is going to come back again. Coming back again. Oh, and how we love you tonight. We declare our love to you. You're the beautiful one. We love your name. How we love your name. Say, say, we love your name. Jesus. You're the beautiful one. Hey, we love your name. Worship him tonight. Worship him tonight. How we love your name. My God. <laughs> beautiful one. We love your name. One more time. Hey, we love your name. You're the beautiful one. Yeah, how we love, how we love you, King. Said how we love you, Lord. Yeah, one more time. How we love you, King. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your Lord of Lords, yeah. We love the fragrance of your name. We love the fragrance of your holy name. For you came, for you came. You came and brought us into the reign of grace. Oh, we love, we love. We Even love this evening, give him a sacrifice of worship tonight name. from the flute, from the fruit of your lips. You Even tonight, no matter where you are. Come on, come on, come on, come on, Zion. We say we love you. We love the fragrance of your holy name. Oh, you came because of your sacrifice. You brought me. Oh, say, say. One more time. We love the fragrance of your holy name. You came. Oh, and that's why we say glory. My God, righteous, righteous one. Oh, glory, glory. My God, to the righteous one. Hallelujah. Just one more time. Glory to. One more time, glory, glory to the righteous one. Subscribe in the mobile He's app a righteous for mobile God. worship music for your oh, ministry today. To the Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We give you praise tonight. I know you know it. I know you know it. Connect with God tonight in the name of Jesus. There is going to come a heavy presence tonight. We are anticipating the move of God. You are here. Moving in this place. And I worship you. 
And we worship you Yeah, yeah, yeah You are here Turning lives around Yes And we worship you Tonight We better worship you only You are the way maker My God Promise Keeper My Lord And my God That is who he is You are the way maker Say, say Promise He don't lie, he's not a man He won't forget He has no memory Like a human being that he can forget Oh, you are here Turning lives around tonight And we come in worship We come in worship Oh Lord, we come in worship At your feet, at your throne We say you are here tonight You are there tonight You are wherever they are now My God and we worship you tonight, my Lord. We worship you. Everybody, everywhere. We make a we make a miracle. It's gonna give you one tonight. Come believing, come in faith. You are the God. That is who you is. Oh, it doesn't matter what it is that we are going through, you are the way maker. My God. Promise, keep up. He's a light in the darkness. My God. Oh, 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 my Lord, you are here. You're turning lives around in this atmosphere tonight. And we call on your name. We worship you tonight. We worship you tonight, oh God. Oh, we worship you tonight. We worship you tonight. We come before you, God. Nobody like you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you. Give him the worship tonight. Join the angels. Join the choir. You are the way maker. Miracle worker. Promise. Light in the darkness. Oh, Give him the glory. Yeah, you are the way maker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper. Yes, tonight it's going to do you good. Oh, yes. My God, that is, that is who you are. Oh, way maker. Say it. Promise keeper. Light in the darkness. My God, yeah. He's who he is. One more time, one more time, one more time. You are the way maker. Say it. Promise keeper. Light in the darkness. My Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is who you are. Miracle worker, my soul is anchored. My soul is anchored. My soul is anchored in the name and in the word of the Lord. Oh, that is who you are. Say it. Promise. Even tonight, you saw the best in me when everybody else looked around and saw nothing. Oh, way maker, that is who you are, that is who you are, that is in your nature. Open up your mouth and begin to talk to God. Liri Bikosa, Shali Bradaske Petela Kadalia, Barasko Bagadan Ketele Kepere Vini Namahaya, Bruzaliven Teke Bregadosh Kabrata, Rakatosh Kebere de Behuna Hatale. We thank you, Father, for tonight. 
We open up this session before you tonight in the name of Jesus. We ask that the Holy Ghost tabernacles here and wherever men and women are watching even after this, we decree the same presence, the same atmosphere. We arrest the antiquities of darkness that wants to have expression in this service. We arrest every demonic operation of darkness in the name of Jesus. We take charge on our watch tonight and we decree Jesus is Lord. We command the atmosphere, yes, to be saturated by angelic beings and the movement of the Holy Ghost to stir up the hearts of men to the place of righteousness, to the place of priesthood tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. We come boldly to the throne room of grace that we may obtain mercy and grace in time of need. In such a time of this as this, O oh God, we come corporately from everywhere, from every corner of the earth, from every profession, from every background and family, from every work. We decree and declare tonight in the name of Jesus that you've brought us together through the auspices and under the auspices of the blood of Jesus. We command therefore the blood of the sprinkling to speak better things than the blood of animals, than the blood of calves, and than the blood of Abel in the mighty name of Jesus. And therefore we quench strange fires. We quench strange fires. We quench strange fires. We quench strange fires. We, fires. we arrest the atmosphere. For the anointing of God to move in a special way tonight. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Holy Father. Jesus mighty name. Amen and amen. Open up your mouth and say a good amen. Glory be to God. We were here yesterday. And we dealt with stewardship. Tonight. I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to pick it up and begin. Excuse me, let me remove my jacket quite a bit. You know, it is winter kind of here in Kenya. There's a lot of, it's been chilly today, very extremely cold. But that is how prayer does. It makes you heat up, even physically. And so tonight, I'm going to deal with stewarding the prophetic word. Stewarding the prophetic word. I'm going to teach and uh, we're going to see how the Spirit of the Lord is going to end this, but we're getting ready to get into prayer and the prophetic at the latter end of this service. Um, stewarding the prophetic, Mark 14 and verse 13 is where my assignment is, and then 1 Kings 13 and 7. Mark 14 and 13, and then we're going to go to 1 Kings 13 and 7. Mark, the book of Mark, the gospel of Mark 14 from verse 13. I want you to pay attention uh, because this is gonna it's gonna open up your spirit into the dimension of how prophetic or uh, the prophetic ministry works. So I'm gonna uh, concentrate quite a bit. I'm gonna tamper it down and I'm gonna teach a little bit as the spirit gives me uh, understanding. Jesus is coming off of Bethany in this journey and um, he's actually going to Bethany and um, the feast of the Passover is getting ready and so he's with Simon the leper in his house and uh, a woman broke an alabaster box this is the preamble to the scripture we are about to read and the, and the disciples there begin to murmur they begin to say to themselves with indignation um you know, this would have been sold for 300 pence or shekels or something. And um, to be given to the poor as if they really were concerned about the poor. But Jesus taking that shot there, he begins to speak about the mysteries of the kingdom. And uh, it is at the end of that uh, presentation that he begins to tell them as it regards the Last Supper. And... Um, Jesus is getting ready to be anointed, having been anointed by this woman as a sign that was a prophetic sign to the disciples. But they were so in the flesh, they were so not connected to the mysteries of the kingdom and to the timelines of the kingdom, they wouldn't have picked up what that woman was doing. And so they wouldn't, they, they, they went uh, after the order of uh, a normal disciple 
who has never penetrated to the spirit world to begin to understand the dealings of God per season. And so it is at this time that uh, this woman breaks the alabaster box and he, she's actually signifying how Jesus is getting prepared to enter into the passion and to enter into the, the, uh, um, the passion of the Christ as we know it, but more so to pay the price and to purchase his own by his own blood. But the disciples were never, never acquainted with what he was about to do. And so they were just, you know, telling Jesus, you know, uh, uh, that perfume, sir, um, even the one we saw in um, Dubai Mall uh, is not as expensive as this one. Uh, she should not have broken that alabaster box, you know, and wasted. The Bible declared, they say, this is a waste of ointment. Uh, for it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and uh, are given to the poor. They murmured against her. They murmured against her. She, I'm going to talk to you, yes. I'm going to talk to you. She, wait, 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 stay on in the service and then I'm going I'm to talk to you right after. Jesus said, she has anointed me beforehand, before my burial. It is at that juncture that now the Last Supper is about to be prepared. And now I want you to watch carefully because my subject tonight is quite intense and it is quite heavy. Stewarding the prophetic word. Stewarding the prophetic word. My subtopic is the mystery of instruction. The mystery of instruction. Go to see you, Lady Sylvia. Each and every one of you. Rahma, Consolata, Maggie, Flora, Baraza, Katimi, God bless you. Louis Wanja, Lady Angeline, God bless you. My brother Chris, Ray, God bless you. Each and every one of you. Rosaline, bless you. Each and every one of you, uh, I appreciate you. Let us get into the word and then we fly in the spirit and get to the place of prayer. There is so much that I need to handle in this week. Uh, uh, in the intensity of the spirit because we've been in prayer and trying to listen to God and uh, there are deep things of the spirit that God wants to release to the body and he wants them taught. He doesn't want them to come in prophecy. He wants them taught. You can teach the devil out of people as much as you can rebuke him out of people. What did I say? You can teach the devil out of people and you can rebuke him out. There are three levels on how you can deal with the enemy. Number one, he commands it that he has given you authority <coughs> and to spread over scorpions and to spread over snakes. And he says, by no means will they hurt you. And then he says that you shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. You shall rebuke the enemy. You know, he has given you authority over scorpions and is one dimension where you rebuke the devil. You can resist him. You can rebuke him and he will come out because he's been given. You are been you are an ambassador you've been given authority by the government of heaven number two is uh, number one is rebuke the devil number two way of uh, uh, really not rebuking I don't want to repeat that word but of dealing with the enemy that the adversary who is the devil is not number one rebuking you also now bring in uh, what you will call an office you bring in a gifting uh, you bring in um, an, an officer, an ambassador whose heaven has mandated, whose heaven has um, lavishly put on the garment, uh, not just anointing, but authority. And this voice and this personality and this functionary by rank and by reason of their authority and rank in the spirit will displace the devil. He will, by reason of their rank, will displace the devil off of a particular jurisdiction, a place, or a, 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 a season, or a church, a community, a nation. So, if I want to deal with breaking barriers as it regards church growth and um, deal with expansion and deal with multiplication of church, I, as a prophet, I will go and listen 
to uh, his most reverend, if you may, religiously speaking, but the most uh, uh, personality that I will, I will watch and listen to will be Doug Hayward Mills out of Ghana and this son uh, of the soil in the continent and the son of Archbishop Duncan Williams will begin to teach you mysteries because by, his re by the reason of his rank and reason of his office, uh, he has bestowed unto himself and unto even into the realm of the spirit a name and he's been given a rank up in there and so by reason of his rank when he begins to deal with the equation of church growth that devil that stays in that jurisdiction you preach from or the church you went you you are uh, you are pastoring or the group that you're pastoring by reason of his rank the power of god will make sure that it honors his anointing he honors his office and your church will grow by reason of just watching that guy, by watching that man, by watching that woman, by watching that uh, uh, tape and by watching that CD and uh, listening to that CD. And that is how impartations work. But you've got to come in honor and honor the rank that God has honored. Number three uh, uh, level uh, of displacing uh, the enemy is teaching. So you begin to teach because in every mind there is a stronghold and the stronghold is as a result of culture and culture is as a, as a, as a result of tradition and tradition is as, as a result of handed down belief system. And the person who puts that belief system is not a personality that you can see eye, you can see by face. It is a personality in the spirit that begins to marionate and manipulate a community, a people, a, 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 a nation to begin to think in in certain ways and so when you begin now to teach you begin to teach and to displace philosophies of men Paul declared and he said when I came to you did I come to you in the fashion or in the preaching the preaching of my word was it in the enticing words of man's wisdom he said nah I didn't come in the enticing words of man's wisdom so that your faith does not stand does not stand in the philosophies of men but I came in the demonstration of power and of the spirit. Three levels of displacing the enemy. That in itself is a whole sermon. Mark 14 and verse 13 now. Here comes Jesus. Watch carefully. Stewarding the prophetic word, the mystery of instruction. I want you to carefully watch what Jesus is saying here. And he sendeth forth two of his disciples. He didn't pick the twelve. He didn't pick seven. He didn't pick no, uh, uh, the, the three. He picked two. Number of witness. He sent witness. And then he says unto them, the number two, the two disciples, go ye into the city and there shall meet you a man. Go ye into the city and there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him. He's instructive now. He's not saying, uh, go and preach the gospel. He didn't say go and lay hands um, like as it were before when he sent the 70 and they came back rejoicing. No, he said, go ye into the city and there you shall meet a man. They, this man that you're going to meet will be bearing a pitcher. He will be carrying, a, a, you would say, a gourd, a gourd of water, a, a jerrican modern terms of water or a something that carries water. Right, that is number one. Number two, and wheresoever he shall go in, in other words, when you see this man in the midst of the population, there will be a man carrying water in the midst of that city, in the midst of Tomboya Street, or or in the midst of um Kencom, in the midst of Westlands, while men are busy carrying on with their business, you shall meet a man that is carrying a pitcher of water. One. Number two, that man that is carrying a pitcher of water, where he will go in, the building that is going to ascend into, the lift, the door, whatever direction that man is going to go, the Bible declared, wheresoever he shall go in, say ye to the good man of the house. Watch carefully. The master saith, so he says, Wheresoever he shall go in, stalk him. Follow the man. Because in the midst of that street, there are many entrances. 
There are many places in exit and coming in and going out and entrances and exit. But your specificity is on the person that is carrying a god of water. So there could be many who are passing through but they are carrying files. There could be many that are carrying other things. But this specific individual that is going to be carrying a pitch of water, follow him. Follow him. Follow him. Follow me and I will make thee fishers of men. The followership here was that you detect the movement. You follow after the direction. You follow. It doesn't matter if he bends a corner. It doesn't matter if he stops, you stop. It doesn't matter if he jumps, you jump. It doesn't matter where he goes, you go. See, the thing about uh, stewarding the prophetic uh, uh, instruction is sometimes there are minute details and sometimes there are generalities and sometimes there are concrete direction. In this case, it was specific. A man is going to meet, you're going to meet a man in that city carrying a pitcher of water, not a bottle. If you follow after someone who's watching, who is carrying Dasani, and you're in Westlands, and the prophetic instruction is a pitcher of water, you're following the wrong person, yet he's carrying a bottle of water. This one must be carrying a pitcher. In other words, it's a high level, and it is in the intensity of the spirit, because the water there is the spirit of God. The metaphor for water is the spirit of God. And then the pitcher there is the container. And so he's carrying the spirit of God in a pitcher. He's carrying a dimension of the spirit. And this is high level dimension. Notice they're coming to the last supper. Coming to the last supper. And then he says, wheresoever he shall go in, say ye to the good man of the house. So follow the man. Track him down. Follow him. Where he will go in. in Get in there. It doesn't matter where it is. Put your foot inside that building. And then say now to him. And watch carefully. What Jesus is uh, speaking here. Is speaking prophetically. He is into word of knowledge. Word of wisdom. He is into you know direction. He is giving direction. Because unto him was poured out the spirit without measure and so in his um is he in his bodily form he is the son of god he is the son of man he is the son of david he is the son of god in his bodily form and so the bible declared that he has been made um that god decided and god had honored him so that all godliness will be on him bodily all of god will be on him, on Jesus, bodily. He came to his own, his own rejected him. But to us, whoever will receive him, to as many that will receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of the living God. He became a son of man so that we can become the sons of the living God. That same Jesus is giving a prophetic instruction and by the eye of the Holy Ghost and by the office of the prophet and by the office of the Son of God because he is operating in all of those offices. He can navigate through any and he now he picks up in the spirit and he instructs them. He tells them, say now to the master of the house, to the good man of the house, the master, watch carefully, watch the wedding, what the wedding there, the good man of the house, that is the owner. Pitcher, the guy who was carrying the pitcher, was to give direction. When he will go in there, you will find now the owner of the house. Who is the good man of that house? Ah, I don't know if you're getting this. Follow after the man who is carrying a pitcher of water. But that is your signage. That is your you would say GPS. That would be your Google map. So follow that direction. Follow that man. And when you stop, he's the courier. You see, when the FBI and the CIA were tracking down Bin Laden before he was killed, they caught hold of the courier. And so this courier uh, was carrying physical, uh, not, not really CDs, but a flat, uh, what did they call it? You see, technology has really moved. We, we are even forgetting That's, that disk that used to slide in a, in a computer that was black and it had um, a silver lining on it and it had a chip inside. 
that you would slide into a computer to retrieve information. That thing. So that guy, because of the high intensity of networking, of intelligentsia and all from CIA, FBI, uh, 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 and all other uh, available, the M15 and M16 and uh, all those kinds of high, you know, uh, the Western intelligence services were tracking by satellite, by phone. So this courier would become the physical postal address for Bin Laden. He would carry flash disks. He would carry CDs, he would carry floppy disks, I think it is, and he would carry them and ferry them from Afghanistan to the end, to the, to the, you know, the portals, and um, you would say the, the hiding out, the hideout, you have the floppy disk, and you would, the hideout for, to where they will download information and to get instruction. The CIA caught up with him and they tracked him, quite literally so. And they put almost a person who would track their movement. Electronically, they were tracking him. Physically, they were tracking him. And so here, God, uh, Jesus speaking to the disciples, uh, says the Okurio is the guy with the picture. Follow him. He ain't the end. He's not the, he's the means to, the, to, to an end. He's not the end in itself. Follow him. Notice, this is a prophetic instruction. He didn't pray. He didn't say go to the mountain 17 days. He didn't know. He's giving them instruction. Stewarding the prophetic word. The mystery of instruction. Pay attention carefully. Let's move on. And you will find now where the, the, the man with the picture has entered. There is the owner of that house. In other words, that was a servant. And wheresoever he shall go in, comma, say ye to the good man of the house. So the good man of the house was in the house. The pitcher uh, that was carried for water is a servant who was carrying that pitcher. The sign was follow the man with the pitcher. And then he will lead you to a certain house. That certain address stick up in there. When you get in there, say, the master saith. The good man of the house is the master to the servant. But there is another master. Jesus says he is the master. So he calls uh, himself the master. And so that the disciples will give the instruction in the order of functionality. In the order of rank. Not just some Jesus. Not just some disciples. Not just some prophets. Some, no. The master. The master saith. Where? is the guest chamber where I shall eat. He gave them instruction in the first person. So they would report that saying. The statement that would be uttered out of the two disciples was supposed to be in the first person. I have had given, I've had experience of uh, uh, instruction and in the prophetic and giving instruction to certain people before. And they would go and do half part of that. Or they would go and twist what you have said. Or they would do a, a, a opposite of what the Spirit of the Lord would have instructed. And then they don't see no result. They don't see the full benefit. And we will come to that in a moment. Let me not run out uh, before myself. The Master saith, Where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? Watch now, watch, 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 watch. Verse 15, Mark 14. And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and prepared. There, make ready for us. Jesus goes ahead and tells them, I know we are in Westlands, or we are in Naivasha, or we are in Nakuru. Go ahead to the city of Nairobi. And in the city of Nairobi, you are going to go to Westland. And in the city, in the in the in the commercial sector or in the in the place called Westland, you will find a man there in a suit. You will find a man in a green suit. You will find a man in a leather suit in a building. Ah, he will be carrying this kind of thing. Follow that man. He is not the end, he is a means to an end. When you go up the lift of that building, you will find now the CEO of that company. And then begin to speak to him this way. There was deep, instructive, prophetic word that these two disciples followed to the latter. 
He said he will show you a large upper room, furnished and prepared. There, make ready for us. Verse 16 confirms. And his disciples went forth and came into the city and found as he had said. And found as he had said unto them. And they made ready the Passover. My question to you this night. Who spoke to the man? They came with the word. They came with the instruction. And they almost kind of hijacked someone's house. So what happened before the disciples come? Who, who spoke and gave instruction to the good man of the house that as it regards this particular master, as it regards this particular request, grant it. Now watch carefully even where the place, the last supper is held. The Bible declared the good man of the house has a guest chamber, one. And number two, he will show you an upper room. So it was a storied house and it is furnished and it is, it is prepared for the master's use. Looks to me like um, Jesus wasn't going to some cheap place. It, it, it seems to me like... Uh, the God we serve does not like mediocrity. He ain't attracted to some cheap, mediocre, uh, hurried up place or hurried up service or hurried up supper or hurried up intimacy with the Lord and hurried up service. He went for the best. The good man of that house had the instruction from the mouth of the two witnesses, which are the two disciples. And from there, he knew by God that this is supposed to be the master's use. Not any other Pharisee, not a chairman, not a priest, not a pastor of the, of the, of the assembly in, the, in those days. He knew that this should be prepared for the master. He will show you. And so his disciples went. And they came and the, that prophetic word unveiled right before their eyes. Right before their eyes. Now hold on to that thought. Let us go to 1 Kings 13. Verse 1 Kings 13. And you're going to see a very tragic story here. Um, that I'm going now to compliment and embellish together with Mark 14. And then we fly. Stewarding the prophetic word. Here comes a story of a young prophet, a young prophet who gets into an instruction by God and he runs with the instruction so faithfully. The Bible declared in the, in the book of 1 Kings 13 verse 1, And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah. He had no name, this prophet. A man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord. And Bethel, unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. And he cried against the altar, that man of God. And in the word of the Lord, and said, Altar, altar, altar. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, a child shall be born unto thee, house of David, Josiah by name. And upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee. He's speaking to the altar prophetically. And he gave the sign that day, saying, this is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall rent, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. And so, when the king heard that word, he called that young prophet. And from verse 6 now we are reading. It's a long reading, but I want you to pay attention. The king answered and said unto the man of God, I entreat you now, I entreat you now, the face of the Lord thy God, I mean, the king answered the, the servant and said, Entreat unto your God, and treat, entreat God. Speak to your God, speak to him. Pray for me, that my hand will be restored. The reason why his hand had to be restored is because the king stretched his hand to lay hold of the man of God. And his hand dried up, and it could not be pulled out, or it could not be pulled in, because it was straightened out to touch the man of God. See, it's very interesting. I'm putting a rabbit trail here. It's very interesting to note that the prophet that had no name was with a king 
who had a name. And the king who had a name, Jeroboam, laid his hands on a prophet who had no name. And then suddenly his hand could not be taken back. That is the kind of level of anointing this young prophet was moving in. His office was um, chief among many in the order of speaking. So he would speak as it were uh, uh, um, prophetically. He would speak and then what he would speak would suddenly come to pass. In this context, the the, the the, the, the king, Jeroboam, figured out that that word that you've just spoken as it regards another person coming and you've given the name. He laid hold of him as if to grab him and his hand could not come back. See, it is important to know who you lay your hands on. It, it, it matters who you lay your hand. It matters who you point to. It matters a lot because you can point as well and you don't know who you're pointing at. And your finger does not come back. And your hand gets dried up. That was the case. And that is the level of anointing that this young man had. But watch carefully now. Even as we deal with stewarding the prophetic word. I told you tonight. I am teaching the mystery of instruction. And so the king says to the young man. To the young prophet. Come with me. Come let us go and refresh uh, you refresh, it's a long journey. You've come, uh, refresh, and I'm going to give you a reward. In other words, a prophetic seed or something. The man of God said unto the king, verse 8, even if you will give my, you, if you, even if you stretch out and give me your entire household, or the half of it, I will not go with you, neither will I eat bread, nor drink water in this place. Verse 9, here was the instruction, for it was charged me, by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink no water. Turn again, not turn again, nor turn again by the way, the same way you came. In other words, don't eat any bread. Don't take any water. Be on a dry fast right there while you're speaking that word. So your level of consecration is mostly determined, determined by the instruction, by the instruction. That has been given you. Your level of consecration. Your level of stewardship. Is determined by the instruction you've been given. And so this man of God. Says to the king I'm not going to eat. Thank you for the delicacies. Thank you for the invitations to state house. To white house. But I'm not coming. Because it was given. It was said unto me. Don't eat. Don't drink. Don't turn the same way. So if I came through get A to state house. I have delivered the word to you king. I am out of here through get B. I am not getting back through get A. Number two, I am not taking no drink, no delicacies, no photography, no after party something. No, I am headed out. The Bible declared verse 10. So he went out the other way and returned not by the way he came to Bethel. It looks to me like the man of God, the prophet here, is really stewarding the prophetic instruction that he has delivered, that he was given. And then the tragic verse came out of nowhere. Verse 11. Now there dwelt an old prophet. An old prophet in Bethel. And his son came and told him all the works that the man of God, that younger prophet, had done in that day in Bethel. The words which he had spoken unto the king. Them they told also their father. So this young man, this old prophet and sons, and they were present when the man of God was giving that high level, high tensive and tension prophecy. A uh, prophecy. And here comes the sons back home. And they say they tell their father who happens to be an old prophet. Verse 12. And their father said unto them, Which way did that young prophet go? For his sons had seen the way the man of God had gone. And, uh, uh, and the Bible declared, verse 13, And he said unto his son, Saddle me an ass, give me a donkey quickly. And so they saddled him an ass, verse 13, And he rode thereon, he followed after the young man. Now from verse 14 is where my entire sermon tonight is going to rest. Or my entire teaching tonight is going to rest. And, af and went after the man of God. 
verse 14, he saddled an, an ass and he went after the man of God with no name. And he found him sitting under an oak tree. Very interesting. Where he's sitting, the oak tree. And he said unto him, Art thou the man of God that came to Judah today? And I'm paraphrasing. And he said, I am. Verse 15, he said unto him, Come home with me and eat bread. Watch carefully. From the king, he said, I'm not going to eat no bread. I'm not taking any water because it was charged me this day by God. I shouldn't eat. I shouldn't take anything uh, as it regards food. The old prophet suggests the same thing. And he says, come home with me and eat bread. Verse 16. And he said, the young prophet, I may not, I may not, I may not. Watch the language. I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee, neither will I eat bread or not drink water with thee in this place. When he says in this place, he means Bethel. So there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel, the jurisdiction. The area and the authority was under this man. He had taken hold of the spiritual jurisdiction of Bethel. Number one. But here comes a young prophet outside the city of Bethel. And he speaks to the altar. He came out of Judah. He came out of the lineage and out of the city from where Christ is to be born. I'm just giving you an embellishment right there. But here comes a prophet who had um, the, do, uh, the dominion mandate and the um, authority to reign around like Ananias in the days of Paul. Paul could not enter that city. The Bible declared Paul had given himself to killing and the threats and, uh, and he was um, uh, um, drunk with power to that extent that he wanted to obtain letters. Letters to go and persecute the church. And so on his way to Macedonia, Jesus appears to him. The reason why Jesus appears to him before he could enter Macedonia is because Ananias had taken hold of that city by the Spirit. He had in the Spirit and he had authority to, to, to permit and not to permit whatsoever it is that should come into Macedonia. He had practiced priesthood to that extent. Even when Paul gets uh, uh, knocked down by the Spirit of God, by the angel of God, and Jesus speaks to him, he says, Then, I am going to give you instruction. Go to the city ahead of you. There you will find a man called Ananias. And he will give you the next set of instruction. Jesus is the savior. Jesus is the one that anoints. Jesus is the one who places people into offices. Yet he knows, Saul, I have converted you tonight. You have been converted. But. The instruction that, I'm, that is about a, a ministry, that is about your next level, and is about your uh, the acumen, the accuracy, the reach, and the dominion, and the altar, uh, I mean, the you'd say, the territory that you're supposed to, to lay hold in the spirit. That instruction is not with me. That jurisdiction has been given to a man in the city. And so go there, he will give you the next instruction. I wish that the church would understand that you cannot go to God directly. That you cannot study your word in your house and go, never go to church. That you can never uh, 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 assume and presume and, and condescend on men and women of God. Because your next instruction, as it regards your next level, is in the mouth of a human being. So go to the city next to you. And then Paul blinded, is escorted to Ananias' house. And Ananias sat, sits there and the Lord had spoken to him and tells him, and tells him, I am bringing to you Saul. And he lays hands on Saul and he says, Saul, the Lord Jesus makes you whole. And the scales, his tampering, he questioned and, and all philosophies and all manner of wrong judgments that were placed in Saul, that were with him, such that he persecuted the church that entire time. The scales, so that he can be able to begin to judge things correctly, fell off from his eyes. Ananias 
had jurisdiction over Macedonia. Uh, I mean over, over the city that Paul was supposed to get into. Here, the old prophet had jurisdiction. And the young prophet comes into contact with an old prophet who had dominion and had jurisdiction and had authority over that city. But the young prophet would have asked himself, why would God send me all the way from Judah and he has his man in that jurisdiction? Why would another prophet come into the city to speak Damascus? Thank you. Damascus. That is the, uh, the, the, the city I was looking for and not Macedonia. Damascus. So Paul will not enter into Damascus. He had, he had sat into... God, Jesus had to meet him in the periphery of Damascus because there was a man practicing priesthood there. And there was a man who had lay hold of dominion. He had lay hold of the entire process and the entire people. And he had lay hold of the atmosphere. So Saul could not enter. No matter how he tried. There was a man standing in his watch, watching over the city. There was a watchman, and his name was Ananias. To this end, the old prophet was sitting in Bethel, and yet God sent another prophet out of Judah, a young one, to come and give direction and to give prophecy. Where was this old prophet? Why wouldn't he give that same one? If he was in the order and aligned with the kingdom of God, aligned with the purposes of God regarding Bethel. He was an old prophet, probably retired, probably not in the calendar of God as it regards what God wanted to do in Bethel. And so he sends a young prophet to Bethel. Watch carefully the conversation. Come with me. Let us go home and eat bread. The instruction was not eat bread. Don't go the same way. Return, the, not, re, return not from the way you came from. Take another route. Verse 16. And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go with thee, neither will I eat bread, nor drink water with thee in this place, in Bethel. Verse 17. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, Thou shall not eat no bread, nor drink water there. Don't take of their revelation knowledge. Don't take of their bread. Bread is revelation knowledge. Don't take of that which has been feed or has been feeding them all this while because it has become stale. Don't drink of their water there. Don't take of their spirit. Don't drink of the spirit of the philosophy of that Bethel place. It is the house of God. It is the place of God, yes. But the priesthood in that city, the prophet in that city is asleep. He's an old man like in the order of Eli. And here is a young Samuel. Don't take bread nor drink water there. Nor return again in the same way. And the reason why they shouldn't return in the same way is because of the way he entered the city. The way he entered the city. Hear me. There are gates that guard cities. There are cities that are guarded by gates. Every city has a gate. Just because you don't see it does not mean that gate does not exist. There are spiritual gates. And the instruction was, young man, young prophet, the word of the Lord to you is this. Enter into that city one way. Return another way. Because that entry when you come back through the same way, that gate is shut. Or that gate is opened up by entities that control that city. Enter through one way. Get out through another. I've had an instruction uh, before by the spirit of many, of many places where uh, I have to enter in one way. And then don't sit up even when uh, we were not driving. I have had encounters before as it regards the voice of God telling me not to take the bus or to take the mat, as we call it here in Kenya, from a certain stage. And so I would walk literally kilometers or if not several meters to find the next stage and then take the mat there. And there will be no next one. Why? Why? I won't question that and I won't ask why. And the spirit will be silent. Even if you ask. 
I am not really talking about myself here, but let's get into the word quickly. And so, the old prophet begins now to tell the young prophet, the new prophet coming out of Judah with a fresh word from the Lord. He said unto him, verse 18, I am a prophet also as thou art. So, to the old man, what he's trying to tell the young prophet, stewarding the prophetic word, the mystery of instruction. Hear me and hear me well. This is going to liberate you tonight. I am also a prophet. I am a prophet also as thou art, like you are. Who do you really think, young man, you are? We've been in this business for quite a while. I know the instruction of the Spirit. I have been in different different places by the Spirit of God. I know how the Spirit of God works. I know he told you not to go back. But I am also a prophet as you are. He was trying to kind of condescend on the young prophet. Remember the young prophet has invoked the instruction, the word of God. He didn't invoke his office. He invoked the word of the Lord. The old prophet invoked his office. And so he says here, I am a prophet as you are. An angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into thine house, comma, that he may eat bread and drink water, full stop. And then the Bible declare, but he lied unto him. There is so much meat. I don't have time to press on this one. He said unto him, I am a prophet also as you are. How many people that are watching me tonight have gone into a service or met with a man of God such as I am or another one and you had specific instruction regarding the same matter that you are about to meet the prophet about. You had a specific instruction when the man of God, whoever was, that man of God was that gave you that instruction. Maybe you could be looking for a baby. Maybe you wanted a job. Maybe you wanted to fly abroad to go and um, for greener pastures. Maybe it was something to do with medicine. Uh, maybe treatment. Maybe surgery. And you went for the man to the man of God. Maybe it was an instruction in a service in the former church you were in or in the church that you was in. And while you're hanging out with that prophetic word, munching, trying to, 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 to kind of uh, uh, think about it and trying to, do I obey, do I not do? Uh, that is too expensive, it is too strong, it could be, uh, uh, th th those are too many details. Here comes a new prophet. Here comes another prophet. Here comes an apostle. And then they tell you over the same issue. And you tell them maybe, this is what I needed. Me, this is what I want. This is what I'm believing God for. Notice, there is a word hanging over your life already. Go and do this and this. Go cut off that relationship. Go uh, boot out the man. Uh, go and, 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 and take time, 21 days to pray. Go and get a seed and take it to your pastor or to the man of God in the house or get it to your mama and go honor your parents. An instruction is already hanging in your atmosphere. But here comes an old seasoned prophet or a new prophet in town and he has a conference in KICC or on Facebook such as we are or on Instagram and you you get a number and you you concern and you contact them on whatsapp or, or 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 by call on something and you narrate the same story kala bahata i'm showing you the picture of the church i am showing you exactly how pentecostals act i show i'm showing you a mystery in the spirit which is the mystery of instruction because there are people who break spiritual laws and they keep on breaking spiritual laws laws right left center thinking they're in obedience thinking that by so doing they will attract the blessing of God. Come! Let us go and eat bread in my house. When he invoked the instruction, you see I met another prophet and he told, I met the prophet in my house, the pastor in my house, the, the apostle in my church or uh, whoever it is uh, said that this is what I'm supposed to do. 
And then the old prophet interjects and says, I am a prophet just like your pastor. I am an apostle just like your apostle. Your apostle. I am a prophet just like your apostle or a prophet who speaks over your life. I am also a prophet just as you are invoking the prophetic office so that the young man operating in the gift of prophecy will feel intimidated. And you, because he has been taught well, he honors rank. He honors rank. He invoked a spiritual entity and he said, Are you standing in the presence of God? And an angel spoke to me. And you see, when you're not matured, hear me? If you're not matured spiritually, you walk with God, there will be all manner of charlatans invoking an angel of the Lord. There will be all manner of words. There will be all manner of prophetic instruction. There will be all manner. All manner. My point to you tonight is the old prophet was never used to speak to the altar of Bethel. God had to pluck out a young prophet out of Judah, bring him all across the land to Bethel. Bring him all the way to speak to that issue that God wanted done or an ordinance that, wanted, that God wanted to do. So hear me, where was the old prophet when God was speaking regarding the altar of Bethel. Why wouldn't God use that old prophet? Why pick another one? And so in this context and in this contact and in this conversation with an old prophet and the young prophet, here comes now, he says, an angel of the Lord speak unto me. It's already contradictory by the word of the Lord saying, bring him back. The Bible declared, but he was lying. Church, watch carefully. I want to bring to you tonight a mystery. Because standing, stewarding what God said really, as an instruction, and I'm reading from my notes, is key to the next level of instruction that should come to you. Stewarding what God said, notice in the past, as an instruction to your life, as it regards that boyfriend, leave him, leave him. Leave him. Mama said. Uncle said. Brother said. You went to church. The teacher said. The, 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 the sermon that day was speaking to you as it regards cutting off that relationship. You never listened. And now you've entered into some deep mess. And then another instruction is coming to you. Telling you now you better marry that same person. You have to know that the same word that was given to you as it regards cutting off that relationship. If you never obeyed, you can't obey this new one because it is contradicting the first one. Oh my. Maybe this is flying all over your head right now, but receive it with your spirit. Stewarding what God said as an instruction is key to the next level of instruction that should come to you. The young prophet stewarded his, uh, he stewarded his, uh, his orders till he met another prophet senior than him and out of honor he followed the man and he abandoned his ordination that is my notes let us read the bible the bible declared verse 19 so he went back with him and he did eat bread in his house and drank water the very ordination the very ordinance that was strict as a, a Nazarite don't Cut your hair, Samson. Never cut your hair, Samson. Never get it to a salon someplace. Don't allow that woman, that those beauty, beauty women from Ethiopia, to cut off your hair in a salon. Touch not that hair. Your covenant is in your hair. The power of God and the workings of that ordinance and of that ordination regarding the Philistine nation, how you will destroy them, is tied up to a physical thing that is in your body. Your hair. Well, you know the rest of the story of Samson and how that, it took the hand of God to make the hair to grow again. And he paid with the plucking out of his sight. In other words, his vision got lost and he died with his enemies. Why? Because the instruction was, don't cut the hair. That was the Nazarite condition. 
his mama was told that, his daddy was told that, his brothers were told that, and he was told that. So his brothers could not cut his hair, his mama won't cut his hair, my daddy won't cut his hair, but there was Delilah who was never there when the instruction was given. The young prophet stewarded his orders, but there was an old prophet who was never there when the instruction never to drink. Don't take of that philosophy of that city. Don't take of the revelation knowledge that is in that city, bread and water. Now watch carefully. It came to pass, verse 20, as they sat at that same table, the word of the Lord now came unto the prophet, the old prophet. He was hearing God now. He was hearing God. He was hearing God. The Bible declared and it came to pass as they sat at the table that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. Verse 21, and he began to cry. He cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, for as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord and hast not kept the commandment, remember the commandment, the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee. So stewarding the prophetic word. In this case, he was supposed to steward the instruction to the latter. That was the commandment. As much as you have disobeyed now, but you have come back, verse 22, and you have eaten my bread drank my water in this place which the Lord did say unto thee eat no bread drink no water he says now your carcass your carcass shall not come unto the sepulcher of thy fathers in other words when you die you're not gonna be buried in Judah And it came to pass, verse 23, I've got a lot to say, I'm trying to run. And it came to pass, after he had eaten bread, and after he had drunk, remember, the word of the Lord comes to the old prophet, and he prophesies. He says, now, now that you've eaten, now that you've drunk, your carcass shall not come out of this city. In other words, your carcass will not be taken and be buried in the burial site of your fathers. That was prophecy. And so the man was still alive. The young prophet was still alive. He ate. He drank. The Bible declared verse 23. And it came to pass. After he had eaten. After. After he had eaten. After he had drunk. He took up his, his, his ass. His donkey and he saddled. Uh, his, ass, his ass to go. His donkey to go. For the prophet whom he had brought back. Came to pass after he had eaten. And bread and uh, after he had drunk, he saddled an ass for him. So the young prophet was given an ass, a donkey, and he was put on it, and he was released to go. Verse 24, and when he was gone, and when he was gone, and when he was gone, a lion met him by the way. A lion met him by the way, and it slew him, and his carcass was cast in the way. He was eaten by that lion, killed by that lion, and then his carcass was strewn on the door on the highway right there. And his ass, the donkey, stood by it, and the lion too stood by the carcass. Now wait a minute. I, I don't wanna dwell on this too much, but I want to go back up there. He sat on the table, he ate what he was not supposed to eat, he drank what he was not supposed to drink. He stuck up in the place where he was not supposed to hang in. So God spoke to both of them at different planes of instruction. Could I be speaking to someone here? You were told clearly, release that money two years ago, one year ago, uh, uh, maybe January, maybe February, maybe even yesterday. Release that money, send it to someone, send it to mama, send it to your parent, uh, do this and do that. And then here comes another instruction. And you are saddling in between. You are you're buying time. You're procrastinating. And then you've ended up in disobedience. And now you are stuck up. And you have actually forgotten whatever instruction it was by the Spirit of God. He spoke to them different instructions 
or spoke to them, the same God spoke to them at different planes of instruction. I want to introduce here someone. Saul, the problem with King Saul, when he was told to kill everything alive in the land of the Amalekites, he spared the king Agag and he spared the sheep and he spared the, the goats and he said it is the people who wants to come and sacrifice to the Lord. You see the problem with King Saul was his spite for instruction. He had a deep issue with being instructed by a man because his wrapped up thought was that he can speak to God. He usurped and uh, uh, he was in living in his presumption. He was so presumptuous that he did that in the first place. He sacrificed. He took the role of a priest. He took the role of a prophet. He took the role of a king at the same time. And he wasn't David and he wasn't Jesus. So what he was doing was breaking spiritual laws and protocols in the spirit by almost contradicting the orders and the ordinances of heaven. And so God begins to warn him. The second time he's given the instruction by Samuel is regarding the Amalekite. And he spares Agag, he spares sheep, he spares goats, and he says the people, the people, the people, the people, the people, he was, he was politically correct. He wanted to play politics all the time and, and to appease the people and, and to appease uh, uh, and to call, and, uh, almost like uh, protect his name and identity. So that he can have favor with people. The instruction by prophet Samuel. Was take away God's enemy. So his defiance to that instruction. Made Saul an enemy of Zion. Did you get that? God wanted to deal with the Amalekites. Because they were the enemies of God. Because of mistreating. And putting out of thorns and snares in the way of the children of Israel. God said, I am annihilating Amalekites and all Canaanites, Jebusites, and all the people before you. Because they are the enemies of my people. And they are the enemies of my ordinance. Saul spared one of that time that God was, uh, that was the enemy of God. And so when he stepped into that equation, he became an enemy of Zion. God took him out. I am sure I am teaching good than you are saying amen. His defiance to that instruction made Saul an enemy of Zion, an enemy of God. It's important to know that the king's business I am writing, I wrote here, always requires haste. Yes, and especially when a nation's agenda is at stake. And so this old prophet mingled his statements and, and mingled his Pentecostal uh, wordings and, and he put some holy words and he put in some church words into it and he mixed that with praise and worship and a little bit of a keyboard and, and a pianist and, and it's all sounded churchy. And the, old, and the young prophet, de, de, you know, deviated out of instruction. When they sat and they ate, Sounds like Adam and Eve. And when they ate, their eyes opened. And when they saw, they saw that was which was naked. They didn't see what Satan had promised. It was a lie. They ate the fruit. Their eyes opened. They saw. When he sat on the table, he sat there and he ate. And he ate and he drank. And suddenly, the word of the Lord came out of nowhere from the mouth of the old prophet. And he said, now that you have eaten, now that you have drunk, what you are supposed not to drink, what you are not supposed to eat, where you are not supposed to sit from this place. The penalty is that your carcass will not be buried with your fathers. There will be no honor, there will be no memorial. There will be no, you will have no, you will not, you will have no memory. You will have no, you will have no uh, 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 monument built for you. They will, be not, they will not say that is the place uh, where the prophet of old, the prophet of God was buried. There will be no legacy for you. You've cut short. Same story with Saul. You have done foolishly, Samuel said. The instruction was follow to the latter. Now you have done foolishly. You did not wait for me. You've done foolishly. Your kingdom should have lasted forever. But now it will be truncated. You will not come to the sepulchre 
of thy fathers. And it came to pass after he had eaten, and they saddled a donkey for him, he left. No memorial. Verse 24, And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way, and it slew him. He didn't notice. The lion didn't come after the donkey. The lion came after a human being. It came after the young prophet. And when he was gone, the lion met him by the way and slew him. And his carcass was cast in the way. So it dragged that carcass after it killed him. The assignment of that lion was to kill, not to eat. So it killed the prophet who had an instruction never to eat in the city. Never to drink in that city. Go one way, come out the other way. Another old prophet comes in the, in the liking and in the manner of the prophetic. And he says, I'm an old prophet, sir. I know this voice. I've been there. Mm, I've been there. You don't need to give all that. You don't need actually to surrender all that. No, no, no. You don't need to sit up in church that far too long. No, sir. I, I, I'm an old. I've been hearing God for far too long. Uh, this speed you're going with, no, slow down. It is, it is no longer, it is, that is not necessary. You don't have to, to really prove a point. You don't have to press into God five hours, seven hours, ten hours in prayer and, uh, and consecrate. No, 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 no. The gift is with you. God will not take it away. There is grace for you. You can, you can work in grace. The old prophet. The old versus the new. The old, verse, there's a lot I can say there, but here comes. And, 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 and it come to pass that the lion met him. He was killed, not eaten. Killed, not eaten. And then the, the lion had a prophetic instruction. The lion was better off hearing God than the prophet. The donkey of Balaam was better off hearing God than Balaam. Than Balaam, Katosha. Would you open up your mouth and just tell God, I will never be bypassed and be, misrepre and be misplaced in the ordinance of God for another. I will not be misplaced in hearing God, in hearing my instruction. Someone else will not take my place like Matthias. Judas hanged himself and died and another one took his place. So the lion would hear God. Kill him, don't eat him. Kill him, don't eat him. Daniel, be thrown in the den of lions. The lions have an instruction from Elohim. Shut your mouth, give him a pillow. And so all the lions that were ferocious sat down and pillows they became. And Daniel will sweet will will take a sweet uh, 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 afternoon siesta and just chill out on the back of a lion. Well, they tried that with uh, Babylonians with the rest of the people. Even before they would come down, they would hang up, and uh, the lions will and they will become meat for the lions. But this Daniel, this particular man of God, the lions had an instruction, and they had it right. They shout the mouth of lions, Hebrews 11, the roller, the roll, the roll of uh, faith. They shut the mouth of lions. They were men. These were men's men. They would shut the mouth of lions by faith. The Bible declared by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. The Holy Spirit was not even there. He was not even poured out in this measure. And yet this man would shut the mouth of lions. Think about that. You are better off with the Holy Spirit. You are a better 3.0 born again believer, not even in the Old Testament, in the New. And you can't shut the mouth. Not even of a mosquito. Not even of a headache. Not even of a situation. You can't shut the... Daniel, by faith, shut the mouth of lions. They had an instruction. And this particular lion killed the prophet. And dragged his carcass out of the way. It was under divine instruction. And then the Bible says. The ass, the donkey. Which is supposed to be actually the prey. The lion didn't eat the prey. It ate the man. And they stood together. The lion and the donkey. Both stood together. And they watched over that carcass. As if they are waiting for some human being to come and collect it. 
As if they are watching over the word to perform it. As if they are watching, oh Lord, forever, oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. So that word, as it regards the ordinance, if you eat, you're going to die, was never even given to the young prophet. He was told, go to the city, speak to the altar, run out, come out of that city. But to the old prophet, he was told, now that that man has eaten in your table, notice it's the old prophet who lied, not the young one. He followed the instruction to the latter, but he got confused. He got um, along the way of running his life and running with the stewarding of the word, running with the prophetic word. He figured, ah, it's too expensive. I have, I have fasted this while it is too strong. Uh, let me take a little bit of water. Uh, the instruction is not that strong. It is not to the ladder. It's not strict. Anyway, who is watching? And uh, In any case, um, uh, we are here for several days and uh, I have done the work of God already. I have spoken to the altar and... Um, let me take a glass of water. And, and he compromised along the way. And he figured uh, he can be politically correct like the old prophet. That is why Judah, the city, had to produce this young prophet to come to the old prophet in Bethel. And he was being wooed into the philosophy and to the bread, the revelation, the feeding. Notice what they did to Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Babylon, they said, bring me fine young men who can understand wisdom who understand science and then he says give them the king's wine and feed them with the king's bread the philosophy this is how kingdoms are made and i've made them i have made available this teaching already it is on youtube should be on facebook also how kingdoms are built feed them with the king's wine give them the king's bread feed them with my revelation feed them with my philosophy give them what babylon is all about give them the mystery of babylon Feed them with the wine. Let them be drunk with the spirit of Babylon. And give them the revelation of Babylon. Bread and wine. Bread and wine. Anywhere you see bread and wine. From Abraham giving to Melchizedek. He was trying to negotiate and to receive something out of eternity. And so his exchange program was for spirit and for revelation. Bread and wine. Bread that strengthens a man's heart. And wine that makes the heart glad. Psalm 115. The Bible declared and he was given bread. And he took the water. And so the judgment came instantly. The Bible declared your carcass will not come out of that city. Of this city. And then the lion stood there. The donkey stood there. Both. One is a ferocious uh, 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 is a ferocious animal. Another one is prey. Yet the lion couldn't eat the prey. They both stood there and they watched over the dead body. And men passed by, the Bible declared, and they saw the carcass that was cast away and the lion standing by the carcass. And they came and told it to the city. They didn't go where the lion was. They came to the city and watch where they went. They went where the old prophet dwelt. And when the old prophet brought them, uh, uh, had that, they went all the way and to bring back the disobedient man of God. The one who was disobedient to the word of God. They laid his body there. And the Bible declared, therefore the Lord had delivered him unto the lion. The Lord, the Lord delivered him unto the lion and slain him. So it was the Lord that gave instruction to the lion to stand right and to ambush that journey. So even if there was a building, it doesn't matter whether there was a river. It doesn't matter whether there was a building, real estate, there it was in Westlands. It doesn't matter what it is. God would have instructed a lion to show up right in Westlands, right in the middle of the street, looking for one person, a disobedient prophet. Not a congregation, not members. No, sir. That particular car, they will stock it. Hear me. I, I don't want to dwell into some, to enter into some things here that will begin to become very controversial or open up a portal that you're not uh, ready for. But I will tell you as a person who sometimes hears and sees things in the spirit. God does not speak to things that can speak back. The spirit of God 
in its highest level of operation as it regards the human mind as to how you can perceive that this is God. The level that he can pick and he can speak to is to speak to you. But everything hears when God speaks. Did you hear that? Everything hears when God speaks. The Bible declared, and I will leave that there for today. He slain him, the Lord delivered him unto the lion which had torn him and slain him according to the word of the Lord which he spake unto him. So the word that activated the lion came from an old prophet who had lied to a new to a younger prophet and the Bible calls that the word of the Lord. So the word of the Lord was activated by the mouth of the old prophet which he said unto him, now that you have drunk your carcass will not leave this city. You will not be buried by your fathers. That was the word of the Lord. And the Bible declared there in verse 26, part B, the Lord delivered him, not the prophet. The Lord delivered him. So the word that the prophet uh, spoke was not just his own word, no sir. It was inspired by God. The Lord spoke to the prophet. But you don't see anywhere that the Lord spoke to the old prophet. The Bible declared, thus says the Lord, for as much as you have disobeyed the mouth of the Lord, up until that time, God was not speaking to the old prophet. He spoke to the young one, young prophet, to come to Bethel. And then when they sit and eat there, here comes the word of the Lord to the old prophet who lies to the young prophet. And so he was killed by God. And then he says to the sons, the same sons, saddle an ass. And uh, they took the carcass away. And I mean, when they, when they come, they pick the old man, the old prophet. They get back to the same street, to the same way. And they find an ass, the donkey, and the lion standing there. The rest of the people who saw that disappeared. They came and reported, him, the prophet, saddles an ass. And they get there, they find the, the lion right next to the body and the lion had not eaten the carcass and it had not torn the ass he had not eaten the carcass it had not eaten the donkey and the prophet the prophet took up the carcass of the man of god and laid it upon the ass and brought it back so the lion was watching over the word of the prophet the lion was watching over the word of the Lord through the mouth of the senior prophet, the old man. I have a lot I can say there. Notice I keep, I keep on insisting on that lie. He lied that God had told him to bring him back. Yet, when God comes to speak, he didn't go to the young prophet. He went to the old prophet by rank. By rank. And he told him, that young one is about to die because he has not obeyed my word. And so I'm going to kill him. And then the lion is assigned that assignment. And yet the lion does not eat the prey and he does not eat the man and it watches over until the old senior most prophet comes to town to take the rest of the people, even including school of prophets that was there. They won't go there. They won't go there. That lion was not a normal lion, sir. That was not a lion. That was a personality that was stuck up in the lion. And so whoever that was not in the ordinance and in the rank and file of the old prophet won't take away that body. There is a lot there. But here comes. They find the body. They find the lion. They find the carcass. And they find the donkey. And the donkey has not eat, has not been eaten, and the lion has not eaten the body. When the man, the old man, the old prophet, by rank, showed up, the lion went back. Think about that for a moment. And they went and buried that prophet. It's important for the church to understand 
that there are rank and files in the kingdom of God. And especially now that we are talking about stewardship. What you steward from the mouth of God is an indication of your alignment to instruction. What you steward from the mouth of God is an indication of your alignment to instruction. There are many to the degree to which God speaks to them. I mean the degree to which God speaks is almost always the degree you steward his first instruction. So to the degree that God will keep on dishing out instructions and telling you uh, uh, the nation is about to enter this phase. No, your family is about to enter into this situation. Your mama is about to enter into this situation. The degree to which he will be keep, um, he will keep coming frequently to speak to you is to the same degree that you have obeyed uh, former instructions of God. Moses says, uh, 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 Paul says it this way. He says then we can be able to judge disobedience when our obedience is complete. Think about that. You can only judge disobedience when your obedience is complete. So to the degree that God will keep on coming to your direction to give you a fresh instruction as it regards marriage or as it regards that man, it will be that he told you about another man and you left him. He told you to leave that man and you left him. He told you to stick with that situation and you stuck in that situation and you came off. Maybe even with your own life only. But you obeyed what he said. Many are looking for fresh instructions. Whoa, man of God, what is God saying about this situation? What did God say about that situation before this man of God? Before there is this new prophet, before there is this new, there was an old prophet. What did God say? To the degree that God speaks to you, it is almost always to the degree that you stewarded his first instruction. So you can only qualify for the next dimension when you honor the demands of the previous dimension. You can't go to God and put a leaflet, a list of things before God when he told you quit smoking and you're still experimenting and now you want to take nations. No, you, it can't happen. You are out of order. You can't go to God with the picture of this man and talk, tell God, Father, I pray that you give me this man that I'm in love with. And that man that you're in love with, you was in love before with someone else that was someone else's husband. And you can't piggyback and tell God, is it him or this one? You're playing before the God and all seeing eye. You can't judge disobedience when your obedience is not complete. The purpose of stewarding the prophetic word, what is it that God told you in January? What is it that your pastor told you? What is it that he said to you specifically? Go and do, do this and this. 21 days of fasting. Three days of this instruction. Uh, 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 give all things that are uh, around your, 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 your shoes and around your clothing. Uh, give them, give them, distribute and uh, in this such a way you will give, go to orphanage or go to and you didn't do that and now you're looking for a fresh instruction regarding the business you want to build regarding the marriage you want to enter into, regarding the young man the fine young man you want to date regarding the money that you're supposed to, uh, to acquire or the job that you want and yet God told you resign you never wanted to resign until you were fired You can never judge obedience until, I mean, you can never judge disobedience until your obedience is complete. I'll tell you something else. When you have spite, when you have spite for prophetic instruction, you open up yourself to all kinds of complications in experience, not in the spirit, in experience. Because all life is spiritual. I'll repeat that again. When you have spite, 
when you condescend on prophetic instruction that will not necessarily mean it came from the mouth of a prophet it means it also came from the remawad of god to your soul to your spirit stop dating that man you kept on insisting now a baby is there now two babies and now you're looking to marry and to settle down and you have a record of disobedience god is still waiting for you to repent on that one first to clean to clean up and he puts you on a single on a single lane where it is only you no one is looking to your direction as a woman from a man's perspective so that you can detox disobedience so that you can detox uh, appetites so that you can detox all this wired up and conjured up mentality that the people have grown up i need a manned guy i need a hunk and i need and so you are running after the physical attributes and god wants to bring you a priest and yet you are running after something else so because of that you have spite for instruction and he speaks to you through dream speaks to you in the bible through the bible study speaks to you to the leader the cell leader the pastor and you've been ignoring all the way now you are carrying a bag full of instruction that you've never followed and then you come to a new prophet we showed up the other day in town with a power word and with a accurate prophetic eye and now you want a new instruction so that you can run with that one thinking it is a different god because it is a different prophet it doesn't work like that the same god is rich to all that is the principle the same god is rich to all you can go and find an a pakistani terror terrorist who's become a pastor and you land there and they will tell you the word of the lord exactly like you left it in africa because the same god is rich to all many of and i'm hearing that in the spirit many right now as we are talking are living in deep in a, with a bunch of prophetic instructions with a bunch of prophetic words we think that they have been told to cut off and to incline others into uh, the the things you've been told to cleave to the things you've been told to cut off the things you've been told to to give the things you've been told to withhold and there are people watching me tonight under the sound of my voice and you're out there tonight even as we begin to preach and as you begin to pray uh, rather you are there you have instructions god told you stop that cut it off get out of there cut off that relationship leave it alone don't do this you never repented you've never been remorseful you've never looked back uh, to to say, to check if it was god or it wasn't you are busy up and you are looking for a prophetic word and you are looking for another uh, instruction and you are looking for another new one and you are looking for another new boyfriend and you are looking for another new business and yet you broke all manner of laws regarding that fast bread business you closed it off badly you cut off that partner you swindled someone you took advantage of something and you are now before god like the old the new prophet like the new prophet eating and drinking and the word of the lord is coming to you this evening to call you back to stewarding the instruction that he was given in the fast what has god told you about consecration what has god told you about giving what has God told you about holiness? What has God told you about church hopping? You are moving from one church to another, looking for a specific one. And you are with a trail of disobedience. And most of the people who move churches, most of the people who are church hoppers, most of them, if you check their life, I will leave it there. If you check their life, you will find out there is spiritual pride, they're very proud spiritually. They want a matured word. And so they're moving to look for a matured word because they think they're matured spiritually. And if you check their trail of maturity, there is nothing to write home about. They're hurting and they always play the victim. They, 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 they have an issue with the pulpit. They have an issue with the speaker. They have an issue with sound. They have an issue with the pastor. They have an issue with his wife. They have an issue with the priest. Team. They have an issue with an usher. All manner. And so you find 
People are church hopping. People are church hopping, preacher after preacher, looking for a spiritual covering right, left, and center. They don't want to pay the price for sonship. They want covers that look meticulous. They want spiritual fathers that look meticulous. They don't want to. They don't want to obey and put be put under you know surgery so that they can they can be told ministry is not for profit. It's not about money. It's not about glamour. It's not about uh, jets. It's not just setting and 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 going about. And so, you find all manner of people in the kingdom of God tonight. I could be speaking to people here who are watching me and listening tonight and you're telling God, have mercy. This message is for you and I. That we can be able to steward. Lest we find ourselves in the fate of the young prophet who was slain by God. One, Saul the king, slain by God because of disobedience. Absalom slayed by God for conspira uh, conspiring against the king. There are many. Judas slayed by God. Because he hanged himself. Ahithophel hanged himself. Absalom hanged himself. Judah hanged himself. When you begin to move in the prophetic course or alignment it becomes a very strict regimen a very strict regimen you've got to follow and so sometimes I pity people who say I want to be like you, I want to be in the prophetic because they have no understanding they think um, we make it easy to look we can call a name here, say that and tell you this and tell you that it looks very easy but the kind of trouble and the kind of strictness that God deals with us to get to that level and to keep on using that, using us in that dimension. It is a journey. It is a personal journey of consecration. And sometimes you falter, yet God will align you. He will bring a big stick. He will bring a carrot because you are a son now. You're not a servant. He deals with his servants in sonship. He does not deal with the servants in servanthood. No, sir. No. No. When Paul begins to talk and he says, Paul, the servant of God. That, what he means by servanthood, he has given and he sold himself to the edicts of the kingdom of God. But when he begins to deal with the issues at Corinth, Ephesus, when he begins to deal with churches everywhere, when he begins to deal in the book of Timothy uh, with the, uh, 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 the people who have abandoned him and, uh, and the people who have done him wrong, Alexander, the coppersmith has done me, and he begins to hand them over to Satan. He's dealing in the matter as a son of God, as an apostle. So he invokes his sonship and he invokes his office. Did you get that? He invokes his sonship and he invokes his office. He's not dealing there as a servant. No, sir. He is a servant to his master, the Lord Jesus Christ. But he is a son in that kingdom. And then he has an office that is called the office of the apostle. He said, I have handed him over to Satan so that he can learn and then he can repent later. If, at, if Paul can hand over another person to Satan, it can tell you the level and the quality of his apostolicity. It tells you the quality and the authority that that man carries. So hear me as we close and then we pray now. I needed to teach that in that setting so that I can bring you up to speed with what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Stewarding the prophetic word. There are many people who have missed their prophecy. And they have missed the season of their harvest. Even when it was in detail. The reason for that is because you became lazy in stewarding that word. You were told, enter the city. Get out of the city in another way. Don't eat, don't drink. You got there. You got inebriated. You got taken away. You got carried away by lights, camera, and action. And as a sumptuous meal that was presented to the young prophet, he took it. And he diluted the instruction. 
and he because what he was eating was the spirit and what he was taking and drinking uh, what he was eating was the philosophy the bread and the spirit of Bethel and God wanted the instruction to be so pure so that that prophetic word that he had just given regarding the altar will not just stand no it will have power over generations so that when people will begin to anti uh, 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 to to begin to narrate the word as it regards the altar in Bethel from the man of God in Judah, they will say that man came in the city with an instruction, and the instruction was he should not eat, he should not drink, he should not go from the uh, uh, the way he came from. But he settled there, and he got distracted, and he forgot the instruction, and God slayed him like he slayed Saul. Because of disobedience. Tonight we want to repent. I want you to open up your mouth now. Tell the Lord. That thing I wrote in the diary. That thing you spoke in that service. In the year so and so. That thing you spoke to my daddy and my mama. That thing I was taught in Sunday school. The thing that has been nibbling in my heart. The voice. The instruction that you gave me regarding that sister. That I should ask for forgiveness. That brother. That mama. That uncle, that daddy, that man of God, that I should go back and submit, that I should say sorry, that I should take the seat to, that I should give my services to. And I've lived in disobedience three years now, four years now, five years now, six months, one month. Father, forgive me. I come. My sin is always before me. Cleanse me by the blood. Open up your mouth. Pray, 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 pray now. Pray now, pray now. You can never have the next level of the next level dimension of life without going back to the instruction that was given in that previous dimension. You will be breaking spiritual laws. God is a God of justice and equity. He will not be able to break his own laws for you. He's not going to bend them forever, oh Lord. His word is forever settled in heaven. His word is forever settled in heaven. He's not a man that you will lie. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. He told you, leave that man. He's someone else's husband. He's someone else's son. Stop uh, uh, abusing. Stop using vulgar language and you still hold on to that language and to that word and to that man and, and you're still born again and now you are looking into marriage and the door is shut because there is a word of disobedience there is a line of disobedience there is a history of disobedience you never listen you never can hear you become numb and leprous in the spirit the spirit and the voice of God has shut down you are moving with old instruction. There is no new instruction to you because you never listen. Open up your mouth and talk to God. Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Spirit of God. Cleanse me from the inside tonight. Purify my heart, O God. Yes, find if there be anything that is inclined towards disobedience. That Adamic nature. That wants to interrogate every instruction. Ah, my father and my God, help me. Help me. Open up your mouth, church. Zion, come on, come on. Open up your mouth. Whether it's quietly, whether it's loudly. Open up your mouth and tell the Lord, help me. Help me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I would like you to open up and pray one more prayer. And say, Lord, from tonight. Lord, from tonight. I want to steward the prophetic word that has hung over my life. That I will be this, I will be that. I will do this, you will do this. I will be that and I will be this. I want to steward in obedience. I rebuke confusion. I come against confusion. I come against the arm of confusion. In my life, I will not be distracted. I will not be subverted. I will obey. And while I obey, you will make a way. You will make a way. You will make a way. May that prophetic word come to pass. And any demonic spirit that eats up prophecy, that feeds on disobedience, that gets papers and file paperwork in the court of heaven against disobedient men and women of God, I ask in the name of Jesus, 
may that day never come to be have mercy on my life i decree and declare i will live and i will walk in obedience not just to prophetic instruction but to the instruction that you give me in my prayer in my in my study through men and women of god through parents and and acquaintances i will be sensitive enough to hear the voice of god i will be sensitive enough to hear the voice of god open up your mouth pray kata paradaske breketele ke breda varada mahaske paduza vaha sele braduza katale shadi kabanta labaros ke preda lirebeka sofra handa kapale you can never am twist god he will not bend his word he will never bend his instruction he is not a man that he should lie it's not a man that he should lie father we thank you tonight we give you glory we give you glory. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Well, that was been tonight's teaching. I figured by the spirit of God that we will quiet it down today and get that teaching out. Tomorrow is going to be different. And Friday is going to be different also. It is going to be highly prophetic. I want you to pay attention to what God is speaking through these teachings seriously. God does not answer prayer. Yes, sir, you had right. God does not answer prayer. God answers the man that prays. Prayer presented to God. He's not a thing that God answers. He's not in itself standing. No, it is incense that is presented by priesthood. So when you say, I am praying, what you are doing is presenting by your DNA, voicing out the agenda, voicing out the ordinance, voicing out the request. May your prayers and your requests be made known unto God. When you do that, you are standing in the presence of God. So when he comes to answer, he's not answering the item. He's answering the person. Please get that theology wrong out of your mind and out of your spiritual system. God does not answer prayer. God answers the person that prayed. And so when God comes to bring an answer, will he find you faithful, stewarding that which he said to you? in the first place because otherwise we become spiritual bastards and in the book of hebrews the bible declared he chastises his son not bastards so he will come to chastise so that we can become better sons but to bastards who have no father in the spirit they have no spiritual uh, inclination to order and to uh, instruction he does not bother chastising uh, chastising them God answers the man that prays, not prayer. So there are people given to prayer, thinking by making many deep and endless fastings and prayer and prayer and prayer, God is going to answer that. And they equate that to spirituality. Well, I have bad news. That is not spirituality. What we are doing is in the spirit. What we are doing, fasting and praying, should be and should maintain in the spirit, by the spirit, guided by the spirit. So that when God comes to mark, he is marking not spiritual exercise. He is marking priesthood, which is an ordinance for the body. The body, all oh, men ought to pray always and to faint not. That is an ordinance. That is an ordinance. It is, not it is not a function of a, a figuring out I should pray, I shouldn't. I, no. Men ought always to pray. When you faint, uh, when you fail to pray because men ought always to pray, the faculty in that ordinance has a, uh, a propensity to make you pray. How? God has put in that ordinance an awareness and a facility and a program that the vicissitudes of life will bring 
and aid that ordinance to be obeyed. Yeah. I will leave that there for tonight. There are too, much, there are too many things coming, but I don't want to go there. Yeah, 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 yeah. For those of you who want to give, you know the ministry number. God bless each and every giver. Even in this week, you can decide to give today. You can decide to condense uh, today and, and give. Or you can decide to pile up your giving up until uh, 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 the end of the week and give it in the service. Because I know uh, uh, the different um, structures and the different, uh, the different things that men and women go through. And so you might not take an offering that is less according to you and give to God. So you might decide, uh, uh, I'll give this at the end of the service, at the end of the, uh, of the week or something like that. Please do that. The lines are open. The ministry is open. Do that according to the leading of the Spirit of God. And so Father, tonight we ask for every giver, bless them, even throughout this week, for every item that has been brought before you individually, corporately, people who are crying out to God, to bring a change in their lives. Like the woman, O oh God of Zarephath, we ask in the name of the Lord Jesus, send, send the ministry of the prophet. And by instruction, we decree and declare, we terminate affliction, we terminate affliction, we terminate poverty, we terminate disobedience by obeying the instruction. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. We give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. We love you to life, each and every one of you. Tonight, I'm not going to pick. Uh, I have no release to pick on anyone. It's not that I'm not seeing. I'm seeing. And, and, and as, a, as a matter of fact, there is someone here who has an issue with nose bleeding. There's a person watching. You have an issue with nose bleeding. You nose bleed quite frequently. And even in the season when there is a, a lot of cold and winter like now, that issue comes over. The power of God is healing you now. That well is getting dried as I am speaking. But I'm not going to call out any other case. No bleeding, just dried up. Just dried up. Jesus mighty name. Amen and amen. If you will forget everything I've said tonight, please forget this not. Please don't forget this one. You can judge of disobedience only when your obedience is complete. So God is not going to give you any other instruction that is so fresh and is going to open you up a, a bullion of opportunities and you neglected the first instruction. No. It can never happen. He is a God of order. That is what stewardship is all about. And when we'll deal with stewarding the glory and stewarding the presence and stewarding the power of God, you'll begin to understand. God does not use people who have a propensity to disobey. Saul was such one. He was left hanging in his boots long time and God went to David and picked him up. Said, I found a man after my own heart. That word heart there was not worship. God did not find David because David was a worshiper. No. That's theologically wrong and it is something that um, has not been me, me, uh, interpreted spiritually. God found David, a man after his own heart, because the agenda in God's heart for the season in Israel was to kill and to deal with the Philistines and the enemies of Zion. And David took care of that business faithfully until he was so bloody that he could not build God's temple. Yes, that was God's own heart. And they found that in David. So David aligned himself with the purposes of God. He was not at cross borders or, or cross misalignment. No, he was not at loggerheads with the agenda of the kingdom for that season. And so the Bible says he died and he rested with his fathers having served this generation. Can God say that of me? Can God say that of you? That I have found a woman after my own heart in Kenya. I have found a woman after my own heart in California. I have found a man after my own heart in the city. So hosting God and his agenda is as expensive 
It is very expensive. It takes alignment. It takes sacrifices. It takes sleepless nights. It takes, there is a lot. And I'm not teaching in ministry to ministry people or a school of ministry here tonight. But I thought that would be important for you to know. So good night tonight. We love you to life. We'll see you tomorrow night. Tomorrow night at nine. We'll pick up the word of the Lord uh, as his leading is. In Jesus mighty name. Amen and amen. Salute. We love you to life. Good night. We shall see you tomorrow in Jesus name.